Hey guys, I'm here with the coach, and we are going to do a series of how to play Warhammer 40k 6th edition. Okay, so uh, for what we want to do first is go over uh, the stuff you will need to play. Okay, first of all, why don't you go ahead, coach? All right, um, you need a few things. First and foremost, you're going to need a rule book. Definitely need the rule book because without that, you can't play the game. Now, this is the mini rule book that you get from Dark Vengeance, right? Correct. Uh, you could buy this on eBay, uh, you know, for by itself. You don't have to buy the whole set. Or you could buy the really big, hefty rule book as well. And the big, hefty rule book has the fluff in it. It has the fluff, and it also has a lot more painted models. And it's, right. it's just a nice little thing to have. Yeah, extra stuff. Um, so what else? This one is great because you draw it in your bag. Yeah. Um, you need dice. Now, if you're going to play this game, you're going to have lots of dice. Um, you need different colored dice just because uh, for the sake of going quicker... If you have different kind of weapons, you want to do different colored dice just to roll it, and you can get it done a little quicker. Then you have your scatter dice, which is this dice that has two bullseyes and arrows on it, and you're going to roll it with two separate dice, objective markers. When you're playing a game, some games have objectives where you got to take over it, and you can have any, you can make them out of anything, or you can have basics, and then you need your templates. You have your large blast template. You have your blast template, which or small blast template, and then you have your template, which is a flamer template and whatnot. And here's just a little trick. I put a little paint on these, so when I go to the hobby store, somebody doesn't walk out with my templates. Yeah, or you can use a marker and put your name on it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, going back here, this scattered dice here, where can you get this? Uh, that comes in a set, or you can buy it on eBay. Um, some third-party Retailers, they'll sell different kinds. They'll have skulls on it or something like that. Right. So, and most likely the players you meet or you might already know already right. have an extra one. Absolutely. So, so if you're going to play a veteran player or a guy who's been playing a while, he definitely has a set of scattered dice. Okay, and then most important thing, you need a tape measure. Reason being is because when you move your troops or you measure anything or you pre-measure anything, you need a ruler. So it's good. Get yourself. You don't have to get a really expensive one. You can get a, just any basic tape measure to use for measurements. Yeah, you could go to a dollar store. And oh, that's, that's what that's from. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so um, that's pretty much what, and of course, you need your army. <laughs> All right? Right. Uh, now, depending on which army you pick, you need to put them together. You need to paint them. You could hire people to do it. Commission services are out there that, that could do it for you. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you just do it as part of the hobby. Because for us, at least for me, part of it is painting the stuff and, and creating it and putting it on the table. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is the tributes for basically your, your troop models, and we'll talk about vehicles after that. Uh, first things first, um, everything is based on the D side, uh, the six-sided dice, so it's one through six, four being the average, okay? So when you're looking at your stat line, you say four, that's an average troop, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you pretty much confer on that, mm -hmm. okay? And so we'll go ahead and go over the, uh, the stat. The first one is weapon skill. Weapon skill. So your weapon skill is basically your melee or your close combat weapon. So if you have a sword, a knife, an axe... Uh, fist, whatever, the better your weapon skill, the better skilled you are at using that weapon in close combat. Okay. So if you're a four, it's, it's approximately average. Better than four, you're a better fighter with that weapon. Right. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is ballistic skill. What's the skill? is how good you shoot. Okay. So the higher the ballistic skill, the better you shoot. Um, this is where you roll to see if you actually shoot somebody and hit that other model. Okay. And that's usually based on pretty much anything that's range. Uh, yes, yeah. anything. Uh, sometimes some spells say that you, it's based on your ballistic skill, so you would have to use that number. Right. Okay, um, strength. Strength. Strength Strength is pretty self-explanatory. How strong you are. So some uh, basic troops would be a three or four strength, but then you get some bigger monstrous creatures or bigger robots or whatever. Better strength. Better strength on that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, toughness? Toughness is... How tough you are. So right. it's how much um, damage, you, damage you can take, how much you can um, withstand. withstand. So sometimes somebody will shoot at you, and because you have such a high toughness, they have to roll a very high number to get you. Yeah, to actually do some wounds on you, you know, mm -hmm. to actually get through armor and do some wounds on you. Next thing we're going to talk about is wounds. Wounds. All right. Um, usually a basic troop, you have one wound. So if you get shot, you get hit, and you don't roll the save, you're dead. Some guys are so strong that they have multiple wounds, maybe because of their armor, because of just that they're that tough or that strong or what have you. So you can have a model with more than one wound, six wounds, seven wounds. It depends on how tough it is, but that's really special characters or, you know, the big guys. Yeah, for the RPG guys, they're hit points, basically. Correct, yeah. yeah. Uh, next one to talk about is initiative. All right, initiative is 
extremely important in the sense that the higher initiative, who goes first? So if you're comparing two guys and one has a five initiative and the other one has a four initiative, the five guy goes first and hopefully he can kill the four initiative before he goes. Right. Um, sometimes lower initiative guys are tougher, but They're you want to have higher, yeah, yeah, you want to have a higher initiative because you want to get that strike in first. Yeah. Okay, and the next one we'll talk about is attacks, the number of attacks you have. Okay, usually in attack you'll have one or two attacks, but some guys are so skilled that they'll have three, four, five, six attacks. Um, and then there's modifiers that you can get a weapon, right. or we'll talk about that if you have more than one close combat weapon, you get more than one attack. But that's how many times you can actually uh, hit or shoot somebody. Okay, now this next skill, uh, leadership, is a little different from the other ones. Right. Being that it actually goes actually 1 through 12. One through instead of one through six. Right. I mean, there are the skills can go above six, uh, but that's rare mm -hmm. on the occasions. But for leadership, you'll see that very often. Right. And, like uh, a, explain leadership. Like a ten leadership. Yeah. Leadership is um, if you're in combat and say you lose combat, usually you go with the leadership of your highest character, and he will inspire your troops. Let's let's stay here and fight. Or if you fail your leadership, then you got to run away, um, or you could run off the board, mm -hmm. or the other guy destroys you, catches you, destroys you. So. The better thing is to have a higher leadership so that you can stay in combat or you can play with that and run away and come back. So leadership is uh, very important to have because you yeah. want to roll. A lot of it really also depends on your leader, you know, on the battlefield. Uh, the higher leadership they have, the better he could, you know, uh, 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 sorry, not retaliate. Sorry. Well, he basically he inspires you to either stay yeah, in combat you. or he can say, Let, come on, let's go and we'll come back, you know, regroup and come back. Right. So, yeah. Rally, sorry, that's what I was thinking, rally. Yeah. All right, the next one we're going to talk about is your armor save. That mm -hmm. is actually attributed by AV, mm -hmm. okay? And the armor save is kind of important because it's how much armor you have uh, before a weapon get through to you and right. you wounds. Some guys will put on armor and they'll get tougher and they'll have a higher, ar uh, lower armor save. And you want to, and this is the only one, you actually want to be lower because the more you roll, if you have a two armor save, you have, you roll two, three, four, five, or six, to actually not get wounded. Yeah. But if you have a high armor save, like a six, you have to roll a six or you're dead. Right. So, and sometimes guys are augmented by the psychic powers or spells. You have your armor or some creatures or alien races are just so tough that their armor save is lower because their skin or their hide is so tough. Right. So, you know, depending on what armor you play, that's important too, because some guys you just throw out there, you know they're going to get killed. Yeah. And some guys are beasts that they just can survive everything. A lot of it has to do with also attrition. A lot of attrition armies have really no or really high armor saves. Mm -hmm. And next thing we're going to talk about is vehicle characteristics. And uh, we're going to go and put this in here. Vehicles is a big part of the game. You're going to see a lot of it. Flyers, mm -hmm. uh, tanks and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, bikes, you know. Um, lots, lots of vehicle stuff. So you'll need to know about the vehicle characteristics. Mm -hmm. Now, each vehicle has their own ballistic skill, their own BS. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, well, pretty much all the time, you're going to be using that BS skill to shoot, you know, off of the vehicle. Right. A tank, a missile, uh, a cannon, or what have you. And it depends on the army. Some ballistic skills are higher, some are lower. Lower, but yeah. But it's usually always based on, like, the troops of your, your army. Right. Whoever's man yeah. manning the uh, vehicle, that's who's going to shoot. And the better the ballistic skill is, that's going to translate into the, into the vehicle. Right. Now, the vehicle has three armor stats. Uh, yes. Front, front side. side, and rear. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on, the better the uh, armor value, the higher it is. Right. So if you have a 14 armor value, you're very good, very strong. If That's pretty a, much a very, you know, like one of the strongest vehicles out there. There's more above armor, 14, mm -hmm. but that's when it gets really tough because... That's when, yeah, Apocalypse or yeah. even... even um, bigger games, huge Bigger games, games. yeah. It's, it's tough and you're going to... But then also you're bringing stronger weapons to deal with those guys. Right, so. right. But um, in the norm, 14 is probably almost impossible to kill right mm -hmm. away. Right. right. It's, yeah, it you're going really to you're gonna really have to shoot at it with yeah. something strong. You can't just shoot it with a bolt gun. Exactly. So again, remember, there's a front, side, and rear armor depending on which way the fire, the shooter is facing. Mm -hmm. You use that the armor value. It's mm -hmm. called armor value facing. Right. Okay. Um, another thing they have is hull points. So... To you can't just shoot at a vehicle and it just stays there. So a certain amount of hull points, it's basically like the old, like you said, hit points. Or hull points are wounds for vehicles. Yeah, it's basically what it is. Right. So now if something has four hull points, you have to get through and knock off four hull points or three hull points, two hull points. And then when it's done, 
It blows, it'll, up. It it'll blow up or wrecks or it depends on what it is, but there's a chart for that. Yeah, there's a chart for that. Um, usually when you just drill down all their, their uh, hole points, uh, I believe it wrecks. Yeah, they're pretty useless. So yeah. that's all right, next thing we're talking about is rolling basic uh, character, characteristic tests. Let's, for example, say I shoot my uh, Jaws of World Wolf at you. Right. And anything that that... that that line hits, you got to roll an initiative test. Your initiative right. for uh, space range is usually four. Usually four. Okay. So if you're rolling a basic character test, you have to roll under, equal or under, and you make it. Right. So that right. then that would not affect that unit that rolled right. a three. Now, if you roll over, which in this case, five or six, you fail, Correct. the unit dies, according to the rules of the Jaws of the Werewolf spell. Right. And the next thing we're going to talk about is a leadership test, which is a little different from characteristic tests. Characteristic test use one dice. We use two dice for leadership because leadership is one through twelve usually. Right. Okay. So it's the basic same concept. You roll under the leadership, you make it. You roll over, you fail. Right. For example, leadership for say a space marine uh, usually is regular what? space marine is eight. Eight. So you roll. If it's under eight, you make it. If it's over eight, in this case, he failed. He probably is running right. You know, a chicken nine. to his side of the table by right. this time. Okay. And also use a leadership test for a lot of things like psychic powers or yeah. spells or whatever. So leadership test is very important. You're going to roll, in the course of a game, you're going to roll a lot of leadership tests. Now, suppose you you have a troops and units and uh, they all have one leadership test and you have your sergeant, which has a higher leadership, usually by one. Right. You usually use the highest leadership. You use the highest leadership. And then if you have unit. a character, usually they have a, the right. highest, which is 10. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is measuring distances. This is basically the front of the model to the front of the model. So if it's six inches, measure six inches from the front to the front. Why don't you right. go on and explain that a little? So basic troop will move six inches. So you take your ruler, make sure you go from the front of the model, and go all the way here. Okay, and what about the tanks and vehicles? Tanks, same thing. This vehicle is going to move. So you just measure from the front because it does not have a base. You just move it up to the front of that, and then you move six inches. So basically, this is a land speeder. It is a fast skimmer or a fast moving vehicle, and they have the ability to move 12. So now it has a base. The model overhangs the base, but you want to measure from the front of the base, and that's your 12 inches right there. Now, um, most of the time on the flyer models, you do measure it base to base. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that's the only difference. And they also have different movements. Most of your troops and tanks usually have a movement of six inches during the movement phase. Right. Okay. When now we're going to go into special rules, which we'll talk about later, where there's flyers or skimmers, they move twelve. Right. Uh, flyers move a totally different way of moving. You can stuff. move. You can move eighteen, or yeah. even the flyer. You can move. You can go thirty-six yeah, inches. Yeah. If you want. But we'll talk about that later. This is just for basic movement, and that's how you move a unit in forty k. Next thing we're going to talk about is scattering. Um, we're going to, there's many ways why you would scatter. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to just talk about uh, scattering using a template weapon, weapon just to show you the basics of it. So, Coach? Okay, so basically the missile launcher is going to shoot at these chaos cultists. Now, there is a, uh, the missile launcher has a really long range, so you want to make sure that they're in range. So if we look here, they're approximately 12 inches away, which is way more than um, the range of the missile launcher is. And what you do is you will put the template, the middle part must be over a model. So you want to kind of position it where you can hit the most guys. So if no, I go correction, right it's here, the model base, anywhere in, well, over the model right. base. Yeah. So now I can put it anywhere. So right now I'm hitting all of them. I'm hitting all six of them. So now we have to scatter. Okay, now this is where the scatter comes in. So let's go ahead and, go ahead and hold this over here. So we're going to scatter seven inches, but the rule is his ballistic skill is four. So right now we have a seven minus four is three inches. So you take your tape measure and you're gonna move that three inches that way and he's only hitting one guy. So what happens is the missile kind of went a little off course and only hit one guy. So instead of hitting five or six, I'm only hitting one guy. All right. Like we just showed you uh, scattering on a template weapon, we're going to show you scattering on deep strike. We're going to try to cover all the scattering rules right now so that you'll get it right away. Uh, it's really pretty easy. We're going to show you about teleporting in right, uh, teleporting during, uh, from uh, deep striking. Right. right. Uh, so why don't you uh, show us? Okay, so we're going to put this model here. That's why I want him to come in and his whole unit to come in. And we're going to roll. 
and then you're going to move three inches this way. So you're going to measure three inches back to here. And the rule is, is now that's where they all come in. They all must be touching each other. So there must be base to base contact. In a round circle. In a round circle, right there. Now, so if there was more ter uh, terminators in this case, you would go all the way around, just kind of like uh, circle out, like kind of daisy wheel out. Right. That's basically how it works. And it's the only thing is, is they have to stay here and they're stuck here. That's their movement. So now they would go into their shooting phase. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now there's a couple of special rules when you do deep strike. If you deep strike, say, here, and you roll the scatter dice, give me the Say we roll the scatter dice and it's telling you this direction. Okay. You're going to be deep striking right into terrain. What happens is it becomes dangerous terrain. You want to roll a dangerous terrain test and we'll talk about dangerous terrain tests in a bit. Right. Okay. Again, just to reunify, you go, it scatters wherever the arrow goes. If you get this round thing here, it's on target. Right. You're on a bullseye. Okay. And the next thing we're going to talk about is deep striking in vehicles. We're going to use and a drop pod as yep. an example. Okay, so the drop pod is going to come in. It's basically the same. You're going to put it wherever you want to put it. And you will roll scatter dice and perfect. It lands right there. But if same as before, if it has an arrow, you would go the distance of the arrow. So this is seven inches. So I'm going to move. And I'm lucky because I didn't deep strike into any terrain or anything like that. But if it did, say it was nine inches, then you'd have to take a test. No, uh, yeah, but for drop pods have a special rule. Yes, well, they have uh, internal guidance systems. So what they would do is they would move up to here and stop right there. Right. And, you know, they don't scatter onto the terrain or onto other troops. They have an internal guidance system that kind of shows them where to go. Right. All right, so that's just the basic examples of um, deep striking in or, or scattering with either vehicle or with teleporting in and uh, stuff like that. So you'll see that a lot, and there's... There's some special rules, like saying mm -hmm. jumping out of a uh, you know moving plane, mm -hmm. uh, that zooming and stuff like that. Those the book will say, well, you have to deep strike, right. and that's mm -hmm. when you have to use scattering and all that stuff. Right. So. And there's modifiers too, where mm -hmm. certain people will roll, and if they scatter, you can re-roll that dice, right. or you can re-roll the distance. Yeah. So there are different things that can change that, but this is the basic. Yeah, like a good example, deep striking in that drop pod, it mm -hmm. had an internal guidance system right. where you could, you know, go up right against, you know, any obstruction and stop there. Right. Uh, where some vehicles, you'd land right in the dangerous train and right. you have to take dangerous train. Right, and then you're in trouble. Like so, uh, next thing we're going to talk about is uh, template weapons, which fits perfectly right after uh, scattering. So, a lot of template weapons, especially the small one, the small round one, and the big round one, usually scatters. Okay, when you're shooting it off a weapon. Uh, there's also a different uh, weapon uh, template, which is the fire template. Or the flame weapon. Or the flamer template or yep. whatever. Uh, that's used for a lot of things. So why don't you go into the example of uh, the flamer weapon. Okay, so what's going to happen is, is you're not going to roll to see if you scatter. But what you do is you take your template, your flamer template, and you put it on the edge of the weapon. And what you're going to do is you're going to move it around to see where the flamer or the gouts of flame are going to come out and get the models. And you can position it anywhere you want to get the maximum amount of guys. So if I look here, if I go this way, I'm hitting four models. If I go this way, I'm hitting three models. So I'm going to probably keep it right about here to hit all four models. And what happens is with this, I don't have to roll to see if I hit them because they're already getting hit. I just have to see and roll if they get wounded. Okay, and the next templates we're going to uh, pretty much is the round template, the small round one and the big one. Like we said, most of the time it does scatter unless, you know, there's specific rules for right. it. Okay, and we already showed you how the scattering works with those templates. Mm -hmm. And next thing we're going to talk about is true line of sight, or rather line of sight in uh, the game, which is, I guess, they use true line of sight, what we call true line of sight. Right. Please explain that. Uh, well, if you look at the game the way you play it, you're above the board. And you're looking. So when I look here, of course, my space marine can shoot at these two guys because I could see them. But if you want to do true line of sight, you got to get down at eye level. Now, if I'm looking, I don't even know that they're behind there. So I can't shoot them. True line of sight is a line that goes right through them. So now they're here. But if they were kind of hanging out over here and I get down and I could see them because this part of the terrain is a little lower, I'd be able to shoot them. But now the fun part is that these guys would get a cover save because he can shoot them, but he might hit some of this 
terrain here. So they get a uh, cover save, which might be better than their armor save. So that's the saving grace. That's why sometimes you want to hide in cover. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a thing about, you know, this game where, you know, people argue about true line of sight. Basically, in the games I play, look, if you can see them through the cover, mm -hmm. you shoot at them, even through trees or whatever. Of right. course, they're going to get the cover saves, but you can still shoot at them. Right. And sometimes some guys I've seen um, have a laser pointer and they'll still shoot a laser pointer out and it'll hit. But, you know, now you're getting really, uh, yeah. really technical. If you just get down eye level and look, um, that's the best way. But it is. When you're above, you're kind of like the overseer seeing everything. Yeah. Of course you could see anything, but you got to remember the little 28 millimeter model is here yeah. and you really can't see. This might be a little piece of terrain to us, but that's a tank. It's very tall and you can hide a lot of guys in it. And that's actually very good for strategy later on. You're either hiding in it or you're using your cover. It's, um, it's a good strategy to use. Yeah. And now there are different, uh, Versions about cover saves and stuff, and we'll go over that uh, a little later because it's different for vehicles, mm -hmm. different for monstrous creatures. And then well. different terrain has different cover, cover saves. saves as well. Now, we're going to talk about turns, and in the game of 40k, you can go up to, I believe, seven turns before the game ends it's, for sure. It's, it's five turns, then you roll to see if you go six, six, and then you roll to see if you go seven, seven. but seventh is the last this turn. Is the last turn. Uh, on average, it's five. Five, five or six. six. Five or six. It really depends on how well the game goes or, mm -hmm. you know, or what have you. Um, so each turn has three phases. Correct. You got the movement phase, the shooting phase, and the assault phase. Correct. And now, now each turn goes by each person. So one person will take a turn, move through their movement, shooting, assault, and then the next person will do their turn, moving, uh, shooting, assault. And that equals turn one. Correct. All right. So there's like a sub phase for each sub phase, like you know, mm. one, one the top of the turn player and the bottom of the turn player. So in the movement phase, you just move your characters. No, really, no sub phase in there. Right. And that's a set number. So that's like we number. went over before, the troops will move six, or the flyers will move twelve, or the tanks will move six. That's a set number. Yeah. Okay. And then we have the shooting phase. The shooting phase again is one phase. You could either shoot or move. I'm sorry, shoot or run or, run. or move flat out. Right. Okay. And now the shooting is set by your whatever kind of weapon you have. You can yeah. shoot 6 inches, 12 inches, 60 inches, depending on what weapon you have. It has a range, and then you will measure that range to see yeah. if your guys are in that range. If you have a 60-inch range, but the guy's 12 inches away, you can you can hit him. Right. Okay. And then the next uh, phase is the salt phase. Now, the salt phase is a little more involved, okay, right. versus charge, and then uh, declaration of charge, sorry. Right. And then... Uh, um, Backfire. The, the Overwatch. Phase. Overwatch. Overwatch. Backfire. And then the that? Assault. Yeah, uh, Overwatch. And then Assault. And then within the Assault, there are sub-phases, initiative phases and stuff. We'll go over that in another video. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, guys. So uh, thank you for joining us for the basics of Warhammer. Right. Uh, we went over the basics about how to play the game and stuff. And then we'll go in more advanced stuff in uh, upcoming sequential videos. Right. Uh, this is Chung and... Coach. And you can find Coach at Family of Gamers 777 at YouTube. Okay, and uh, well, you could just look at my favorite list or, or what happened, and he'll be there. Okay, remember, guys, uh, like if you like, sub if you haven't, share what you can, and favorite if you love me. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.